good morning good afternoon and good evening guys based on the time zones you all are coming from so guys before we start with the session can you all please give me a quick information if you all can see my screen and hear me learning here as well thank you for the confirmation everyone so my name is Neeraj Kheria and I've been working in this IT industry for more than 13 years now so the main agenda for today's session we have gathered for a discussion on react readers what exactly we mean by react and how exactly it is structured in terms of complete architecture so that's the main motive of the today's session so today we are going to discuss on the introduction to react what react is what exactly redux is what are redux components setting up the components data flow and then we are going to discuss on react with readers so first of all if you talk about the need for redux platform now why redux was needed now just to control the data flow we must use a redux as data flow architecture that's the main purpose of using redux so that we can design we can have a complete control on how data structure how data is being flowed from one part to the other and react as you know is a full-fledged framework so not exactly it's react as you know it's not exactly a complete framework it's more like a library that we have that is developed by facebook and the entire component for the web page built on react is divided into multiple components which are completely independent to each other right which are completely independent to each other and that's why the react follows the component based approach where the data flows through the components and in fact the data in react always flows from parent to child components which makes it unidirectional and this keeps our data organized and help us in controlling the application better because of this application state is contained in specific stores and as a result the rest of the components remain loosely coupled and this makes our application more flexible leading to increased efficiency and that's why the communication from a parent component to a child component is convenient now you may have a question that but what happens when you try to communicate from a non-parent component so a child component can never pass data back to its parent component because again it is all divided into parent and child right so as the, uh, the current architecture for aws a child can become a child component can never pass data back to the parent component and react does not provide any way for direct component to component communication and even though react has features to support this approach it is considered to be a poor practice and it is prone to errors and leads to spaghetti code that means a more complex code and so how can two non-parent components pass data to each other this is where react fails to provide a solution and redux comes into picture that's why we do require redux so in redux what happens again in redux because as we know they cannot pass the same data to the parent component and that's why we have redux so redux provides a store here we have something called a store as a solution or to solve this problem now a store is basically a place where we can store all our application states together and now the components can dispatch state changes to the store and not directly to the other components and then the components that need the updates about the state changes can subscribe to the store therefore with redux it becomes clear where the component gets the state for as well as where they should send their states to and now the component initiating the changes does not have to worry about the list of components needing a state change and they can simply dispatch the change to the store itself and this is how redux makes in that data flow much easier so each and every company they can simply subscribe and, they can, and then it can simply dispatch the state changes that's how the entire state changes are maintained now if we talk about what exactly is redux so redux so just like react redux is also a library which is used widely for front-end development and it is basically a tool for managing both the both data state and the ui state in the javascript applications and redux separates the application data and business logic and into its own container in order to let react manage just the view and rather than a traditional library for a framework it's an application data flow architecture and it is most compatible with single page applications which is known as SPAs where the management of the state over time can get complex and Redux was created by Dan Abramov and Andrew Clark around 2015 
and it was basically inspired by Facebook's Flux and influenced by functional programming language ELM. And Redux got popular very quickly because of its simplicity. It's a very simple architecture and small size and great documentation support available. Now, the main principle, if you talk about the principle of, of Redux, then there are three components. We have single source of truth, state is read only, and then we have changing using the pure functions. So if you talk about the single source of truth, now the state of the entire application is stored in an object state tree within a single store. And a single state tree makes it easier to keep track of the changes over time and debug or inspect the application. So for a faster development cycle, it helps to process the application state in the development. And that's why with only React unidirectional data flow, direct communication between the component is not allowed. And then we have state is read only. Now, the only way to change the state is to trigger an action. And an action is a plain JS object describing the change. Just like the state is a minimal representation of data, the action is also the minimal representation of the change to that data. And an action must have a type property, which we can say conventionally a string constant. And all the changes are centralized and occur one by one in the strict order. Like we have action and then we have no action depending upon the states we can change it and then third we have changes using the pure functions where in order to specify how the state tree is transformed by actions we need pure functions and pure functions are those whose return values depend solely on the values of the arguments reducers are just pure functions that take the previous state and an action and return the next state and we can have a single reducer in the application as it grows. We can split it into smaller reducers and these smaller reducers will then manage a specific part of the tree itself as a part of reducer components. And Redux has multiple advantages. It has, it simply help us in making the code, we can say much easier to maintain. And it also offers server-side rendering. It offers us developer tools the community and ecosystem and it makes the entire credibility of the outcome much easier as well right now in terms of components of readers we have three main core components available we have action reducer store and view so let's discuss on these one by one so action is a plain javascript objects which are payloads of information for a store so basically the only way to change state Content is by emitting an action. So actions are basically the plain JavaScript objects, which are the main source of information, which we use to send data. Now data can include user interactions, internal events such as the API calls, or, the, or it can be form submissions as well. And we send these from the applications to the store, and then the store, and, the send, and then the stores receives information only from the actions, and then we have to send the actions to the store by using store.dispatch. We have to do that by using store.dispatch. And internal actions are simple JavaScript objects that have a type property, which is usually a string constant describing the type of action and the entire information being sent to the store. So for example, here we can define the type as add to do, and then we can define the parameter as text. Now, actions are created using the action creators, which are the normal functions that returns the function. Right now, to call this action anywhere in the application, we can simply use the dispatch function, where we can define dispatch, and then we can define it to be add to do text as a part of action component. So here we can add dispatch, and then we can define add to do text as a part of dispatch method. So after action, we have something called as reducer. So reducers are described, the, no, basically actions describe the fact that something happened, but they don't specify how the application state changes in response. So this is a job of reducers. So basically reducers are what? Reducers are basically pure functions which specify how the application state changes in response to an action. So basically, it's it is based on the array or we can say the, the array reduce method where it accepts a callback, a reducer, and let us get a single value out of multiple values, sums up the integers, 
or an accumulation of streams of value and then in readers reducers are functions that can take the current state of the application and application returns a new state altogether so basically we can take the now by for seeing how exactly it works we can take the help of a simple example as well so let's say we have we have defined the entire function reducer state where we can define the initial state and action then here we can use a simple switch action type the case as r to do where we are returning the object assigned to state and then here here we have a to do list for state and then in text we are going to come to work on the action does text and then completed should be false and then the default is what we are going to return the state itself so here we are taking the help of all as action the previous state and the new state altogether as a part of reducer component and after reducer we have and again things which now there are certain things that we should never include in reducer so we should not be mutating its arguments we should not perform side effects like api calls and routing transitions and we should not call pure functions like date.now or math.random these things should be avoided when we are working with reducers next component we have store so a store is basically a javascript object which can hold the application state and provide a few helper methods to access the state dispatch actions and register listeners so the entire state object tree of an application is saved in a single store and as a result of this redux is very simple and predictable so you can so you can easily predict what exactly is going to happen here and here we can pass middleware to the store to handle processing of data as well as to keep a log of various actions that can change the state of a store and all the actions return a new state by the reducers so here for example here we can take the example for these import where we can create a store from from redux where we can import to do app from the reducers that we are going to create and then let we are going to use the store component to as a part of store so with the store the data can be synchronized over the server's level to the client layer without much difficulties and this makes the entire development of large applications much easier and much faster as well and if you talk about the responsibilities of store then store allow and store is basically responsible for holding the application state it allows the access to state via get state it registers the listeners via subscribe and it allows the states to be updated by dispatch action and then we can handle the unregistering of listeners via the function returned by the subscribe as a listener then the last component here is what the last component here is view so view is basically both smart and dumb so again both the smart and dumb components together they build up the view and that's why if you talk about the entire view component the only purpose of view is to display the date passed on by the store and the smart components are in the charge of the actions whereas the dumb components are underneath the smart components notify them in a case they need to trigger the action and the dev components are needed they simply notify when the action has to be taken and the smart components in turn pass down the props which uh, which the dumb components treat as callback actions and to see the entire flow of the application we can also refer to a diagram so basically redux with uh, here the entire redux architecture is concatenated on a strict unidirectional data flow as we have discussed and in an application all the data follows the same life cycle pattern making the logic of your application more predictable and easier to understand it also basically encourages data normalization to ensure the entire consistency so if you look at this diagram here we can understand the entire component here so again from now here we can have the containers as smart components and then we have dumb components where these are going to pass it now smart components are going to pass data as props and again it is going to be passed to actions and then to reducers and then it is going to be stored in the store components and then it is going to work now store, one store is going to work on the provider component which basically re-renders when the store changes now we can work on setting up the entire components where we are going to make the entire component ready in terms of setting the entire getting the entire store ready then we can work on setting up the communication 
and then preparing the action callbacks. So basically, now if you talk about the entire components here, then here we can have multiple components that we can deploy and we can declare and we can add into the application. First of all, we are going to have the action creator. Then we are going to have the producers. Then we are going to have the number of views, the store and the provider and the root component. Now, when we are talking about getting the store ready, then again, hey store, you are hired. Here is my reducer team to help you out. And then setting up the communication. Now, when now the, the entire root component asks the provider that this store is hired, and the entire provider sets up the entire network to, to make sure the entire components is updated. And then the, the views simply, simply connects to the application to get all the updates. And then in terms of preparation of the callbacks, the view is saying, okay, I need to make it easy for dumb components to understand, and I should bind the action creator and the dispatcher so that the dumb components can just call the callback for the easy view of the elements. And now, if you have to work with Redux, then the React bindings are not included in Redux by default, so we have to install them explicitly. So we can use the same npm packager, package manager, and then we can install the save React Redux. So we have to add these dependencies along with Babel, React, and Webpack in order to get started. So before we can get started, now in case you haven't worked on React framework yet, so React is basically for download for working on React, we do need to have the Node.js package installed. So in case you don't have Node.js installed, we can also we can refer to this link through which we can download the entire Node.js package into our system. Based on which environment we are running, we can choose the entire package. So for example, this is available for both for all for Mac as well as for Windows and for Linux environment, depending upon the configuration required. So we can choose accordingly. Once you download the entire NPM package, now then we can open. Suppose if you are running Windows, then we can open up our command prompt. And then first of all, we have to work on installation of the NPM. Now to install React, we have to first of all download and work on the create react app we have to work on create react app in case we have not installed it then we have to make sure we are having the create react app package manager from the npm and after installation of npm we can simply check for the version if npm is correctly installed then we would be able to see the npm version returned to us all right now in case we are working this one this for the first time we can work on install React now here we have to use the in the npm library. So here we have to use npm install react. Now we can install react, we can install react DOM, and then we can simply specify to save these elements into our system. In case we have not installed the npm the react framework so far. So by using the npm package manager, we have to make sure we are going to install all the other all the packages available so as you can see now these all packages has already been configured into a system so if they are already configured we can start by using the application as npm create react app so here we can use npm create react app so basically this is going to into initiate the creation of a react app by the name of edurica one so for example, let's say if we have initiated the React app one, right? So here we can choose the React app one and then we can define the application name as my app one. And this is going to install the React, React DOM, React scripts with the CI template in the given folder and that too in the application folder that we currently created. So it may take a couple of minutes for this entire thing to be set up. So let's wait for that to happen. So once the entire application has been created, then we are going to work on deployment of this app here. So once we, this app is going to be created, we can switch to its directory and then we can simply use npm start to get started working on this entire application. So once this has been configured, to get started here, we can simply use my app one why we had to find one because we already have an angular application running by the name of my app so we had to first of all switch and then to get started we can use npm start 
So basically this will initiate the entire script and then we can get started with the entire application deployment one by one. To get started, we can use any of the IDs that we have. For example, here we can make use of Visual Code Studio. We can make use of the Eclipse. We can make use of IntelliJ, which, whichever we are comfortable with. Visual Code Studio is a way, one of the free IDs available where we don't have any kind of licensing required. So we can make use of this ID to get started. And once we are in our Visual Code Studio, here we can simply open the folder where we have installed the application. So here we have application under my app one. So this is going to open the entire React application directly with us, where we have the entire public source and get an package JSON file that we are going to work with. Now, once we are in this entire setup, then here we have to work on multiple components as well. So here we can now. Uh, First of all, once we are in the component, we can first see the actual application code. Basically, index.html is the one that gets rendered in the browser. And here in index.html, we can see the ID defined as root. So whatever we have defined in the app.js for root, that is going to be rendered here. Right. So here we can locate a file known as app.js. So in the source, we have a file name as app.js. So here we can make any changes here and then we can get started. Right. So for example, say if we want to make any changes to this app.js here, then we here we can define all the components that we want, and then we can get started working on it as per the requirement. So for example, here we can create come now. Here, once we are done installing all the dependencies, then we can create a components folder and source folder. And then within that, we can create the app.js file as well. So for example, in under the source, we can create another folder name as components. We can create another folder by the name of components and under components, we can create a new file and we can name it as app.js under components in component in app.js here. We can work on importing the react library right here. We can we import react from react library and then we have to work on import now here. We can also import user list here. We can also import user list. Here we have to work on importing the user list from where we can import user list from the containers that we are going to create as a part of our discussion step by step. So now for, for the time being here, we can define this to be as container list. So here we can define container and then the user list that we are going to create as we proceed further. So here we can define user list and then we have to import user details, which we are going to create here. So here we can define user details now we're going to report you now whatever suppose if we create multiple components and we can specify where exactly these components are stored so here we have this one stored in under containers and same way under containers this is also going to be stored in user details section now once we are done here we can define a constant as application and here we can use a simple lambda function now here, are, now here, what we can do here, we can simply work on creating a division that you want to be rendered in the, in the browser. And here we can define a simple H2 as the user list that we are going to create. And then we can create a user list, a user list. We can close the HR. We can define another H2 as user details. And then we can define user details as well. So here we can define user details. And then we can close the division. And here we can define export default app. Export default app. So once we are done now, here we have to create new actions folder and then we have to create index.js in it. So once we are done with here, we can create a new folder on the same source. We can create a new folder. We can define it as actions and under actions, we can define the index.js new file and we can name it as index.js. So under index.js here, we can define here. We can export the constant as select user. And here we can define user that we are going to export. And then we can use a simple Lambda function. So basically here we can type in as console.log. Now here we can find the message that we want to be displayed. Suppose you clicked on user. 
and which user the user has clicked on. So here we can define the parameter as the first user. Now here we want to show the list of the first user, right? So here we can define user and that too for the user.first. So let's see the first user that we want to be displayed. And then we can return the type as user selected. So here we can define user selected. And then we can define the payload. Or uh, let's say we keep it as a payload itself, not payload. And here as user. Payload should be user as what we are defined. So this is what we define as actions under the action folders. And then we have to create user.details. Now then we can work on creating the user.details yes, in a new folder called containers. So again, in same SRC, we can create a new folder by the name of containers. And under containers, we can create a new file by the name of user details.js. And under user details.js, here we can work on importing React. And under and then we have to now since we are going to do work on component, so here we can define component from where? So here we can define it to be from React. And then we also have to work on importing the connect. So here we can import connect and connect from where? From the same React from the Redux component that we have worked on. So here we are going to work on importing this from React Redux. From React Redux. And then here we can define a class, class as user detail. So here we can define class as user detail, which extends to the component that we have imported. And then under component, we can define not components, component. Then it is going to generate the error. And then under components, here we are going to render. Here we're going to use render. And then under render, we can define if. Uh, here we can use this pointer as if this props dot user uh, and then we can return a HTML a simple HTML element as div and here we can ask a user to select a user select a user that you want the user to be seeing once they see this being returned let's keep it and after this we can return now uh, the elements so first of all we can return we can create a division tag and under division, suppose if you want to display any image, then we can define the image as well. For example, here we can define the image. Image width, suppose as 150. Height as 150 as well. And then the source of the image, where we are going to bring the source from using the props for the user that we define and, by, and that too, by using the thumbnail attribute. After image, we can place a simple H2. So suppose here we can define now in H2, we can define this now, again, props dot user first. That's going to be rendered. So we can display the property here. And then we can also just use another prop dot user dot last, the first username and the last username because first and last both have to be showed. And then we can define the H3. And using H3, we can define the age. Where we can define the this dot props dot user, and then we can close H3, and then we can add a short description as well, description about the user, and for description as well, we can again we can use another props as props dot user dot description, and then you have close division. We can mark this one close as well, and then if you want to create a function out of it, we can create a function as well. So at the end, we can create a function. So here we can create a function as well, where we can define map to state, map state to props. And this is for state that we are going to define. Where we are going to define the user to be state dot active user that we are going to define here. And then at the end, we can simply export default connect map state to user not not to user to props to props and then we can map it to the again we are going to export this for user detail 
this is we have to do clear outside not the inside here and now once we are done with this now here we can also go ahead and create a reducer folder so in the same source section we can work on creating a new folder by the name of reducers and under reducers let's rename it as reducers because again generally we keep it the nomenclature has to be taken care of so under reducers we can create a new file and we can name it as index.js index.js now in this index.js we can simply define we are going to combine all the reducers together so here we can define import and here we can define combine reducers combine reducers now where we want to combine this, these reducers from so here we can define the entire from readers library from the readers library from where we are going to combine this from the readers library okay we have used a wrong parenthesis here this is, has to be a curly brace not the this one so here we are going to combine this from redux and then we are going to work now here we are going also going to import user reducer that we have worked on and this is what we are going to import from the reducers from where from the folder for reduce users reducer user section and the same for for importer reducers right and then we are going to work on importing active user reducer and this is what we are going to import from where this is what we are going to import from the reducer and uh, reducer and active user active user so now here we can define the entire constant here guys so again here we can define constant for all reducers so here we can define for all reducers now for all reducers we can define we want we are going to combine the reducers we're going to combine the reducers and in here we can define how exactly we are going to combine them we can define we can declare users as user reducer and then we can declare this for active user as well for active user and this is going to use the active user reducer active user reducer now here we can export the default application to all reducers all reducers now once we are done we can simply work on creating another file by the name of reducer active user.js in the reducer file in the reducer folder so in the same reducer folder we can create another file and we can name it as reducer active user.js and in here we can export we can export default function we can export default function and here we can define state should be null and for the action that we are going to define here and then after the action then we can define the switch parameter here so here we can define switch between now here we are going to define action type then for the first case we are going to define as user selected user selected now this is going to be the first case that we are going to define for the first case as user selected and if user is selected then we can return the action payload the action payload and then we can break the loop as well and then afterwards we can simply return the state we can turn the state here and same way we can now same way here in the same reducer component here we can create a new file as well so here we can define the file name suppose as reducer we can define it as reducer dot now here we can define reducer users.js where we can define all the reducer files as well so here we can define export default function that we have called and then in here we can return the list of users and here we can define the id for example for the first user it can be one and the first name for any user suppose it is going to be alice so here we can define alice then we are going to define the age that we have been working on so here in age we can define suppose alice is 25 
and then we can add a small description okay we missed all in one parenthesis here so here in terms of description we can add a, a simple description as play sports and then the thumbnail for this one we can define any of the anchor tag as a reference when wherever this one is going to be pulled suppose if we have to configure aren't going to be a feasible task at all so in that case we can make use of something called as configuration management system we can make use of something called as configuration management system so if you want to configure multiple servers at once by using these configuration whatever configuration we want to change we can define that as a part of the template where we can specify whatever changes we need to make we can define all the parameters and that too on how many instances how many configuration we can define that easily as per the requirement and then we can allow this particular template to execute the entire component of configuration management automatically on n number of servers for example if you have to configure a thousand servers then we can easily do that by using those kind of configuration management system as per the requirement thank you so much for joining guys and have a great day ahead Take care. Bye-bye.